In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Amanita muscaria, also known as the fly agaric mushroom. I'm also gonna give you a remedy for sciatica using this mushroom. People that have used this remedy swear by it and wish they'd found this remedy years ago. So stay tuned to the end of the video where I share on how to prepare the mushroom and how to use it as a remedy for sciatica. Amanita muscaria, also known as the fly garrick mushroom, is the stuff of fairy tales. It's been used for thousands of years by shamans, from Scandinavia to India, for all sorts of things. In modern culture, it's become the symbol of what a mushroom is. Even the gamers among you will remember Super Mario and having the mushrooms bouncing around. Well, those are all based on the fly garrick mushroom. The Sami people in Northern Finland used to ingest this mushroom to introduce hallucinogenic effects. If you were to consume this mushroom raw, you would have the hallucinogenic effects. Unfortunately, you're gonna have a serious bout of vomiting with it as well, which to me doesn't sound much fun. If you were to consume an unknown amount of these, maybe it's 12, maybe it's 15, I don't know, you probably would die. So please don't experiment with that. The Sami people actually figured out that consuming the mushroom secondhand actually reduced the vomiting effects. But what do you mean by secondhand? Well, basically, if somebody eats it, has a wee in a pot, somebody else drinks it, that person drinking that urine won't have as much of the vomiting. So maybe you wanna go and find a friend, but unfortunately your friend, having consumed them in the first place, is gonna be pretty ill. Philip Rogers actually wrote in his excellent book, Mushrooms, that if you want to round up a herd of reindeer, all you need to do is chop up a lot of fly garrick, put it in a field, and these reindeer will come and consume it. Apparently reindeer love fly garrick mushrooms. There's a bit of a rumor that Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, got his nickname because of his love for fly garrick mushroom. The causes of the psychoactive effects are actually two compounds, ibotenic acid and muscobol. It's actually the ibotenic acid which makes you vomit. But what happens when you dry the mushrooms at a relatively high temperature is that the ibotenic acid somewhat converts to muscimol. So you can get some of the hallucinogenic effects without the vomiting. Again, I don't recommend this and this is for your entertainment purposes only. Now there are certain people that consume the mushroom as an actual food source. Apparently what you can do to prepare it is chop it up, throw it in salted water, keep that boiling for a while, throw away that first batch of water, rinse off the mushrooms, boil them again, and they should be good to consume. Now, to me personally, that's way too much faff. When I go foraging, I can find all sorts of mushrooms that actually I can consume without all that faff. So unless I'm in a survival situation, that's not something I'm gonna be bothering with. So how do we find it and how do we identify it? Well, fly garrick seem to love birch forests. So I've brought myself out to a forest I know with lots of birch trees. This place is actually scattered with them. So it's not gonna be hard for us to find a good specimen. Well, here you go. As you can see, they're quite distinctive and that red cap is quite difficult to miss. When these mushrooms are very young, they start off in a white sack. These scales are essentially remnants of that sack as they burst out of it, which means that the scales can actually wash off, as you can see has happened a little bit over here. As the mushroom gets bigger, you can see that it starts expanding. And now older examples of these will actually go concave. Here you'll also see that they have a skirt and they have a vulva base. There's actually one that's been knocked down and probably eaten. As, as you can see, the base of it looks like that. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that it can sometimes be more orangey than red. So that's not to say that you haven't found one, but if you're not sure, just leave it alone. So why don't we get back indoors and I'll teach you how to make the sciatica remedy. This remedy was originally given to me by a fantastic herbologist who also recommended this book, Practical Herbs by Henrietta Kress. It's in this book that Henrietta details the remedy and the method. She also mentions that it was an elderly Finnish lady that originally gave her this recipe. All you need to do to make it is chop up one to two fly garricks. Ideally, the cap should be under 10 centimeters large. Chop them up into two to three centimeters stroke an inch, and then pop them in with 500 milliliters or a pint of vodka. Steep that for two to three weeks. After the two to three weeks, sieve off the mushrooms, and you'll be left with a liquid that looks something like this. And by the way, it really does stink. When sciatica strikes, put two to three drops of this liquid on the source of pain and you should find it magically disappears. But this liquid is pretty toxic. Make sure you label up the jar to make sure that you don't drink it. Some people might find an alcoholic stinky beverage quite appealing, but trust me, this is not gonna do you any favors. If you found value in this video, please do subscribe, give it a thumbs up, 
and click here to see more of my latest content. Cheers.